Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. This is your Chelsea Southampton match preview at St Mary's. The game is tonight. So if you want to see six things we learned, it's not going to be delayed like the game against Leicester was. I was at a party, birthday party at the weekend. So the video went out late. I had to watch the full game back. I don't just want to watch highlights and do six things we learned. So I needed time to watch the full game, give my thoughts on it. And I want to talk a bit more about that Leicester game in this preview today for Southampton because there are a lot of talking points to focus on. When we look at availability, N'Golo Kante, injured, he's not ready. Conor Gallagher, suspended. Jorginho, Kovacic, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, really, the two midfielders available. Mason Mount, what is the guy? You know, and I don't mean that in terms of like, I don't think he's very good and I've given up faith in him, no. I think Mason Mount's a midfielder. Is he being used as a midfielder? No, but in that game against Leicester at the weekend. Chelsea did look better when Mason Mount came off. Do I think there could be a bit of an issue with the attacking system and how everybody plays when Mount is or isn't on the field? I do think it is an issue, but I don't think it's an issue that is unsolvable with the only solution being that Mount doesn't play. And it is Southampton. We know if you watch the video with Tubes, with the Golf Life video, Mason Mount is doing nine holes, 55 minutes, Mason pinging golf balls around. If you watch that, Tubes asked Mason Mount, what is the game you look out for? And of course he said the obvious Arsenal and Spurs, but he also said Southampton. And there's a history there because he's a Pompey boy. But also, Mason Mount turns up in this fixture more often than he doesn't. So, I want to talk about Mount when we get further up the field in my starting 11. But the other news, of course, is that... Khalidou Koulibaly was suspended for two petulant yellow cards and then subsequently a red card in the game away at Leeds where we got absolutely battered, humiliated. Koulibaly is back in the team. We're going to begin quite early. I normally talk a little bit more about the opposition. We'll do that actually right away now. Saints look good against Man United. I'm not going to lie to you. I think United were lucky to come away with a win in this game. Southampton defended incredibly well. There were a couple of moments where... I don't know how Manchester United didn't score. They also look decent on the attack this season as well. They look good on the counter away at Leicester City as well. So, Chelsea can't really go into this one at St Mary's thinking that we're going to get the same kind of game against Southampton as we did last year when we went there and scored six goals and absolutely humiliated them in their own backyard. We won 6 0. We were enthralling, thrilling, breathtaking at times in this game, sandwiched between the two games against Real Madrid. Chelsea are going to be up for a physical test. Thomas Tuchel said in his press conference that when you play Southampton, you know you're going to be in for a battle. You know it's going to be physical. They're going to try and put big tackles in. Hassan Hootel, on his day, can mastermind brilliant results for Saints. He can also see capitulations like we saw against Leicester in the 9-0, like we saw against Chelsea at home when we beat them 6-0 last season. However, I do want to begin now and discuss the goalkeeper. I said in six things we learned that Mendy could have done better with the goal that Leicester scored with Harvey Barnes. However, I've kept Edouard Mendy in goal and my back three is Trev, Silva and Koulibaly for this game against Southampton. As has just turned 33 years old, Trevor Chalaber. Every time he started for Chelsea, I think we've won 14 and we've drew four of those matches and we haven't lost when Trevor Chalobah has started. That is actually a very phenomenal stat. And Trevor isn't just starting against your Southampton, your Burnleys of old, you know. Trevor's playing in big games too. So I do think Trevor's performance in that game, with Tuchel saying that Trevor Chalobah is going to be staying at Chelsea this summer... I think it would be a big statement here to keep Trev in the team. He played very well in that game against Leicester. Chelsea needed to be compact. Thiago Silva was the star man in the defence at the weekend. There's no doubt about that in my mind whatsoever. Thiago Silva was arguably the best player on the field and once again showed that despite his age, there is nobody better right now to read the game, control the game and to manage positionally Everybody else around him. Silva in a back three, significantly better than Silva in the middle of a back two. Which is why some people might want to dissect everything I say. And say, well, you wanted a back four and it didn't really work. We were better in a back three, even with ten men. Correct. 
That's the way football works. We can change our minds. We can change our opinions. And I do think going to Southampton and trying to instigate a similar game plan to what we did in that demolition job last season is what we'll go for. And I think at this point, when it is still a tentative part of the season, it is still early in the season, and considering Chelsea dropped points against Spurs, didn't deserve to, but we did, considering we went to Leeds and got battered, and considering the way that the Premier League is looking right now, where there are new teams showing that fight and the ability to grind out wins, to win well, and to be competitive, Chelsea can't afford to drop points again in this game at Saints. So, I've gone with the back three. The wing-backs, or 3-4-3, three, three, whatever it's going to be, at this point I'm confused about what we're going to see game by game from Chelsea. And with injuries, with suspensions, with changes of personnel, with uncertainties about signings and who plays best where and what fits best with different systems and transitions. Cucurella and Rhys James. cucurella has been brilliant since he's come in. Ben Chilwell. Yes, I do think there's going to be a time where we see more rotation and maybe we could see Chile come back in for this game. But I think Cucurella keeps his place. Rhys James, as I've said many times in the last few videos, currently Chelsea's best attacking outlet. Currently Chelsea's playmaker. Most creative, arguably the best player in the team. Thiago Silva as well. But Rhys James is a phenomenal, sensational footballer. And both him and Cucurella have made very good starts to the season. Reese, I don't want to see him play right centre-back again. I think until we know what we're going to be lining up like going forward, Chelsea can't afford to put Reese James in right centre-back. And I think Ruben was pretty good in the game of the weekend against Leicester. He probably should have scored, definitely should have scored, in my opinion, and was creating stuff as well. But I do think in this game, we need Reese in that wing-back position. We absolutely dominated Leeds that last season. In the middle... I have gone with Kovacic and Jorginho. I was thinking about having Ruben in there. We saw it last season. I was thinking of putting Ruben in there for a bit more physicality. But again, as much as we renown Ruben Loftus-Cheek as being like quite a big physical player, I don't really think that part of his game anymore is the standout for Ruben Loftus-Cheek. And I think Chelsea will try to dictate this game from the middle. And as much as... Jorginho isn't always positioned perfectly in front of that back line. I think he did a good job in the game against Leicester. And for that reason, he stays in the team. I think Gallagher probably would have started again if he wasn't suspended for this game. But Kovacic alongside of him gives him a bit more license to go forward, gives him license to carry that ball. And Chelsea really need to work on these transitions when Jorginho has the ball the issue at the moment is we're still not creating enough for Raheem Sterling. And you saw Reese James was the man with that assist for Sterling's second goal. There does seem to be a problem in the final third. However, despite there evidently being a creativity issue still, Callum Hudson-Odoi is on loan to Bayer Leverkusen. He's gone. Hakim Ziyech looks as though he's probably going back to Ajax for 25, 30 million euros. So, if Chelsea can't meet the valuation of Anthony Gordon... Depending on what happens with Aubameyang and also Wilfred Zahar, which are currently the players we're talking about, Chelsea is still looking short in the forward areas, even if we sign one or two of those aforementioned forward players. So, because of the way that Mason Mount always turns up for this fixture, and I don't want to be the guy to write Mason Mount off, because just because I'm saying that we were better when Mount came off in the game against Leicester at the weekend doesn't mean that I don't think Mount fits the system. But I will say one thing. I do believe with the interchangeability that Tuchel wants from that front line, there needs to be, I think, from Mason, a bit more dropping deeper. And I think he needs to drop deeper and allow Cucurella and Reese James to be further advanced to him so that he can pick out those final balls. Mason Mount isn't necessarily being expected to be the final ball assister with cutting line-breaking passes in the final third. I don't necessarily think that's entirely what... Mount is being asked to do in this system. But I've gone with Mount, Havertz and Sterling in the front three again. Because of Ziyech and the fact he's going to be leaving, because Callum hudson is already on his way out. Chelsea are short in the front line right now. And yes, we got the Broya story and maybe Armando Broya deserves to start. But Havertz's work rate was phenomenal in the game against Leicester. I know work rate has become like a taboo thing to say, but he had to because we had 10 flipping men in this game. So Havertz couldn't be that direct waiting for the ball 
through the middle number nine. He had to go and work his bloody socks off and he did exactly that. So I've gone with that front three again. Sterling is one of the, is the first attacking name on the team sheet right now because that first goal, phenomenal. That arrival for the Reese James Cross, we've been begging for this for so long. So Raheem starts, Havertz and Mount again. And I think the interesting thing with Mount right now is I think if Conor Gallagher wasn't suspended, we might have seen something a bit different here. And maybe Tuchel might have rested Mount and not started him in this game, but he's always up for the game against the Saints. He very often scores against them too. So for that reason, I'm backing Mason Mount in this one. But I want to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. I thought Mount was very good in the game against Spurs. Nobody was good against Leeds, and I thought Mount was poor against Leicester. But there is a very distinct difference, and I think a lot of people in this Chelsea community need to understand that slating a player for individual passages of play or performances doesn't mean you don't rate. And I think we've all got to get round and used to the fact now that since Mount's broken into this Chelsea team, he's loved by Chelsea fans as he should be because of what he's already achieved, because of his output. Yes, we want more. Yes, we want to be more fluid and see more than just pressure sometimes in the final third, more incisive passes, more chances created. But I think Mount is going to be so key for Chelsea in this game. And I'm going to say that we go to Southampton and win 3-1, Mason Mount's going to score two of those goals. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of my Chelsea starting 11? What is your Chelsea starting 11? And if we can go for 2,000 likes before kickoff, I'll be a happy man. And hopefully we go and get three points. Come on, you blues.